because I, I believe that this, the court is illegitimate uh, with or without if the United States didn't exist because it's essentially an anti-democratic instrument. So let's, let's say India uh, has uh, troops um, on a peacekeeping mission in the Democratic Republic of the Congo, which did sign the International Criminal Court, and their, their soldiers are accused of war crimes. Under the theory of complementarity that the U.S. Clinton administration lawyers fought to get in the treaty and were successful, uh, the country could have the first go, say, okay, we're going to try, under complementarity, we can try our soldiers. So India tries the soldiers, the soldiers are acquitted. At that point, the International Criminal Court could say, uh, you weren't willing uh, to, uh, uh, to have a fair trial, to carry this out, so we, we can now take up the case. So the final decision making on what constitutes complementarity is with the ICC, it's not with, uh, with the nation itself. Um, and of course the other major thing is you have major powers uh, that are actually involved in war making, including democratic powers, United States, Israel, India, Indonesia, the world's largest Muslim democracy, they're that that are not ratified the International Criminal Court. Uh, but their soldiers could be subject to it if, if one of these alleged crimes occurs on the territory of a country that did sign uh, the court. Um, of the countries that signed the court, um, counted up according to Freedom House, um, about 37 percent are from non-democratic countries, and they provide the judges, 42 countries that are listed by Freedom House as not democratic. Um, so they would provide the judges and sit in judgment over the, over the citizens of of democratic states. 